Hello YouTube and welcome to a new video. In this video I'm going to take a look at this Power Mac G4 Gigabit Ethernet model. Um, you've seen it before. It's running OS 9 still. And it used to be running OS 10 Tiger, so 10.4. But uh, I've decided to uh, do something extreme. I installed OS 10 Leopard on it, so let's see if that runs. First of all, you know, something that I need to inform you of. That's the RAM over here. I've uh, changed one of the 128 megabyte modules, it's the original PC100 128 megabyte module, for a 256 PC133. So this whole Pro Mac G4 is now running at uh, 133 megahertz on a RAM. So that's good. So it now has 768 megabytes. And it still has that lovely. RPC G4 dual processor, 450 megahertz processor. Disks are initializing. Apparently, we're going to boot into Mac OS 9. So, let's give it a reboot, shall we? And I'm just going to hold in the option key. Okay. There we go, Macintosh HD. Now we just have to wait for about a century and then we can continue. So yeah, this Power Mac is still running that uh, gorgeous 450 megahertz dual processor. It's running pretty well, I must say, with 768 megabytes of RAM. I'm uh, looking into upgrading it to a gig, so it can run Leopard a bit better, probably. Hmm. Okay, no start screen scaling this time. For some reason, on cold boot, it will not scale to the screen, but if I reboot, it will. Everything is just back to normal. But oh well, at least it's booting now, so it's almost finished already. This thing is almost as fast as my uh, Hackintosh booting from the SSD. Well, not quite as fast maybe, but you know. It's definitely not slow for an ATA 66 hard drive. <laughs> Keep that in mind. This thing does not have IDE 133 megahertz uh, on it, so. So there we are. Mac OS version 10.5.8, dual 450 megahertz PowerPC PC G4, 768 megabytes of SD RAM, all that good stuff. Power Mac 3.3. Got two disks in here, Mac Star 80 gig, Mac Star 30 gig, and a Metashita 5x DV ROM drive. It can burn, but it can read DVDs. No PCR cards at the moment, because I took my USB card out. That's this one. I, sp I uh, sort of thought that it was causing problems and uh, it would slow down the system quite a bit. I need to do some more testing on this. It's a USB 2.0 card, so yeah. It's good for uh, file transferring. Although I can just uh, hook it up to my network, as I did. No SATA, of course. USB, yes. No airport. It's all going through Ethernet, so. And of course, the graphics card is a GeForce 2 MX. Which is a, a card that was meant for the PC. I got it from a girlfriend and I just flashed it to, uh, to a Mac BIOS and uh, it worked just fine. It's better than any Rage 128 Pro that I've got laying around here somewhere. It's somewhere in this drawer with all my other parts, so. Or some of my parts. It's, it's not even close to all, but. Uh, but sure, this is the Mac OS X Leopard desktop. So what is there to do with this all of a system? Well, not much. I've got BitTorrent on here so I could, you know, reel in some downloads and put them on the network. So that still works fine. 
We got Onyx for some uh, very important tweaking and stuff that I did because uh, Mac OS X Leopard usually doesn't run all that well on this low amount of memory. But on this particular Mac it's running just fine really. I had to disable all the animations effects pretty much because uh, the video card cannot keep up with it. Because as, as I haven't actually shown yet, as you can see there, Core Image is in software mode. Quartz Extreme is supported, but as you can see, Core Image is not. For Core Image, you need uh, you need at least a Radeon uh, 9500, I believe, or a GeForce 5. So right now, so it's an FX series. Without that, Core Image is not going to work. So all the animations effects have to be rendered by the CPU. Now this is not really a problem if you have, for instance, a Power Mac MDD 1.42 gigahertz G4. That should be able to handle it just fine, but you know this old Dual 450 cannot handle those animations, not even remotely. It is up to date, by the way. So let's just start up some programs. For instance, I got Mac Tubes here. Just fire that up, so you can browse for YouTube uh, videos, and then you can download them. So, for instance, if we're going to sh to look for Pikachu on Acid. I'm random, I know. We can just look it up. We've got a whole bunch of junk here. Now we're going to scroll to the right, or just, you know, maximize the freaking window. There we go. We're going to look at the amount of views. There we go. It's from i5 Tunes, and now it shows up on top. And now we can just, you know, go and download it in FLV format so we can still play it back. Before it does seem to work pretty well on this Mac, that's, but that's because I've got uh, some plugins installed, for instance, Perian for video playback. But I've already downloaded Pikachu on Asset here, so you can just open it up with VLC. It's VLC 2.0.9 for PowerPC. Great job on that last battle, Pikachu. That's glitch. Look at all this cash we won. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Meanwhile. Runs just fine. <laughs> Can't show too much of that for copyright properties. <laughs> and whatnot. And I don't want that mess, so. Then we got iMovie HD. I just uh, found it on my network and was like, eh, shit, I'll just install it. So now we can just import that piece of video. And that's going to take pretty much an eternity, so. But it does work. So what else there to show? VLC is not much interesting. Got time for Fox here to browse the internet. It's a very advanced browser based on Mozilla. Pretty much every PowerPC user out there knows what it's like. So we'll wait for that to load up. It's done now. You can see it says 10.4 Fox 24.3.0. That's pretty recent. Okay, so last thing I wanted to show how this thing runs on the network. So it, because it has gigabit Ethernet, you can really push a lot of data through this thing. So I'm just going to connect to my FreeNAS server here. Connect. And I'm going to connect as a guest. There we go, we're on my network. So now I can just browse video, for instance. These are all a bit too much for this thing to handle. That's all HD content. But if I open, for instance, just an old Pokemon episode that I rendered for the iPad, just wait for a quick time player to load up. Click 
play. There it loses sync with the network. <laughs> That's because of my Freenet server. That's by no means the Power Mac itself. It's kind of overloaded at the moment because I'm actually transferring files on a different computer. But uh, it opens up pretty quickly. It renders pretty well. If I wanted to, for instance, transfer some files to my desktop here, I just go pick some software. For instance, Office 2008. I'll just drag it there. And as you can see, that runs pretty well. It's pretty quick. So, in terms of file transferring over the network or something, these things are actually perfect. If your network is gigabit, you can just push a hell of a lot of data through it. So you could use it, for instance, as a file server if you want for your older Apple devices. Because you can just set it up as a, as a file server, pretty much, with OS X server. And then uh, load it up as a file server. Use the uh, AFP protocol, so you can just uh, push it through pretty much any kind of Apple device out there. That's nice. At least Macs, not really iPhones and iPads, but, you know. That's still pretty cool. But, uh, you know, if I just could assess the whole feel of this thing, it's pretty zippy. It's usable, definitely. That's that's really something for a PC that's, or pretty much a computer, I must say, that is 14 years old now. It can still do this. It can still run an operating system in 2007. I'd like to see a Pentium 3 run Windows Vista as well. That's impossible. I can tell you that. So that's pretty much that. Pretty much concludes this video on uh, OS X Leopard running on my PowerPC G4 Power Mac Gigabit Ethernet. And uh, as you could see, it ran pretty darn well. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you all for watching.